Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of BSD Synergy. I'm your host, Mason Egger, and this week's episode is called NetGate and PF Sense, a match made in heaven. So, just so you know, this week I'm going completely off script. Um, I didn't really have time to get the OpenBSD router video going. Been working a lot of late, uh, a lot of really late evenings, but I decided that it would be a good idea to at least get a video out there. And so I decided, well, let's just talk about something. And it's been a while since I've covered anything PFSense related, so let's talk about PFSense and NetGate. So for those of you who don't know, NetGate is a hardware manufacturer that has recently uh, teamed up with PFSense. I believe now they're the corporate sponsors, and they kind of you know, push the PFSense uh, project now, along with building the hardware that you can buy your PFSense boxes on. Um, their hardware is absolutely fantastic. If you remember my last PFSense video, I went over uh, the rack server that I got from them. So what we're going to do today is go over the PFSense hardware platforms and show you one that you may have already seen, but is relatively new since I did my PFSense video. And honestly, if I didn't already have a rack server, it would be the product that I would buy. So let's just jump on into it. So NetGate builds network security appliances, which makes it an awesome partnership to go with PFSense. I had the pleasure of meeting their CEO at Texas Linux Festival, and what a wonderful person she is. And I just want to say, you know, it's a really good product. I have, I, I like my PFSense appliance. Um, you can view their appliances from the NetGate page, and you know, they already say right here, PFSense security appliances. They are pretty much the appliance form of PFSense, which is actually really cool and kind of mirrors what I do because for the company that I work for, I work on the appliance team for our software products. So that's that's pretty nifty. Um, and but and here are the products that they offer. Uh, anywhere from two to six uh, gigabit Ethernet interfaces, they do offer rack mountable uh, 10 gigabit or four with two, two 10 gigabit and four one gigabit uh, and some pretty awesome options. But let's just go ahead and go over to the PFSense page. So we go to their products. And this is where you can kind of view more details. So up until recently, these were your options. And this SH, uh, SOHO network, remote worker, is the one that I was looking at for the longest time. And you know it's 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 three hundred dollars. You know that's that's a little bit high on uh, for for me my end. You know it's like before I got the router before I did any of this I was like man three hundred dollars is a lot for a router. And don't get me wrong I have, I know people spend them on their access points all the time. You know the uh, Netgear and all those other uh, Hydra Cobra whatever the, their name Nighthawk that's one of the names of them now. Um, and you know that's pretty cool. Uh, but. What they decided to do, and what I'm really happy they did, is they went with a lower model version, um, and that is the SG-1000. It's a smaller version, it's ARM-based, this is basically an embedded PFSense platform, uh, which makes me really happy. Now, as you can see, it has much less RAM than the SG-2220, 2220, yes, that's hard to say, uh, but it runs considerably less power. Uh, but it does have two, two gigabit Ethernet ports. And if you go to it, it goes to the NetGate page. And this is what, when I saw this, this was awesome. Uh, it looks like they're currently in pre-order right now, so I don't think you can actually get one. But it comes with a subscription to PFSense Gold, which is a $99 value. So basically, you have to buy the PFSense Gold to get it, which is understandable. But this is basically a $50 uh, board that has two NICs and in finding embedded boards, I, I tried. That's that's actually what I originally tried to do was before I got the server, I was trying to build a PFSense box and I wanted an embedded PFSense box. I wanted it, you know, Raspberry Pi, that big, but I wanted it to have two NICs and finding a two NIC board for less than, you know, $300 was almost impossible and they were like 10, 100 boards. This box has two gigabit NICs and is 150 bucks. So you, know, you can use it for PFSense or you, if you need an embedded board, you can always, like, I think you can probably just wipe it, you know, wipe it and put your own thing on it, which would be pretty awesome. Um, the only thing about this board that may be a down downer for some, for those of you that currently uh, have high data needs at home is that it does only enable a maximum throughput of 300 megabits per second. So, and I believe that's probably that's probably just due to the architecture of the chip. Maybe the ARM processor. 
you know, since it's lower power consumption, probably can't handle that. Now, for most of you, unless you live in an area that's populated by Google Fiber, or you live in, an, in, in, in a metropolitan area like I do, where there is over 300 gigabit, or megabit, sorry, whoa, 300 gigabit, that would be fun, where there is over 300 megabit per second internet. I personally pay for 300 megabits per second, and every now and then I do a speed test and I get like 380. Um, so that's nice. But unless you live in an area where you know, you're not dealing with this or you, you don't, you, you know, your, your, mega, your down connection is, you know, 10 megabit and that's, you know, that's on a good day, then this really isn't going to hinder you. And it is going to get you into the PFSense market and let, allow you to play with it for a relatively cheap cost. Now, if you do have Google, uh, you know, like Google fiber or AT&T fiber, I don't know if they offer uh, gigabit yet. Um, I'm currently hiding behind TWC. My, my modem is in just a straight bridge and it bridges straight to my PFSense box. Um, and my box does everything else for me, then maybe go with a higher uh, model, you know, get get the $300 model, if you really care. I mean, uh, people that pay for gigabit internet are people that expect gigabit internet, and I'm pretty sure that my audience is, you know, if I'm getting it, I want, like, every single one of those bits is mine, and if you, you short me a bit, I'm coming after you with a pitchfork, because I've done that before at a Time Warner Cable many times whenever, or Spectrum now, but maybe soon to be AT&T. Oh, yay, Monopoly, no choice whatsoever. That'll be freaking great. Um, you know, how can we take a service model that's pay by the gig internet, not for the home network, but for their mobile network, and let's combine it with Time Warner Cable. We might as well just get in Comcast, you know, that way we have the three worst, uh, providers, you know, and that's all you got. Um, I lived in, I lived in central Texas for a while and I actually had access to Grande, Grande while I was down in San Marcos and Grande was, was not bad. I, I did, I had it in one of my first apartments. I didn't get to have it in another apartment because they were exclusively Time Warner Cable, now Spectrum, soon to be AT&T. Oh, that's just, that's just some bullshit right there. So yeah, get yourself one of these little mini boxes. They're really cool. So, sorry for the short episode this week. I promise that next, hopefully in the next couple weeks, they'll stop working me 712s and I'll have the ability to actually do uh, do, do some actual videos. Uh, I'm not really working 712s, but I have been to work the last, what, 12 or 12, 13 days in a row now. Um, gosh, as, as a, as a student coming out of college and going into an area where we have release deadlines and we have GAs and code freezes and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's been eye opening um, to how much people lose their freaking shit whenever that deadline starts coming, uh, especially whenever there's things that, you know, aren't ready. And I'm definitely seeing that now. Don't know if I like it, but we'll see. I've got, you know, a while left in industry, but we'll see what happens. So anyways, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to my loyal uh, subscribers who, if you've been here from the beginning or if you're new, you know, we're over 300. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last video, but we're over 300 now. Um, which is awesome. I never thought there'd be 300 people that cared enough about BSD to tune in every two weeks now, um, to, to just listen to me talk about stuff. Maybe I'm just that funny. I'd, I'd like to think that I am. So thank you everybody. Thank you for, you know, accepting these small little, I'm really busy and don't have time videos. Uh, I promise that I will, I will always try to keep to the two week schedule, even if I have nothing to talk about, even if I'm like, Hey, I'm here and I don't have a video. Sorry. I will at least make sure that I upload something. Uh, remember you can always check my Twitter, um, in these little pot time saving videos, not really time saving, more of a stall videos. I really call these stalling. I'm stalling for time cause I don't have any, um, I will always make sure that I go over something BSD related, uh, which might be good. You know, maybe people like the shorter episodes. I Some of these episodes that I've been doing have been 20, 30 minutes long. And YouTube does a lot of really fun analytics that tell you how long people are actually watching their your videos. So if people actually want shorter videos, you know, one topic, you know, not the full explanation that I've been giving. Maybe that's what I can do is I can alternate between big and little videos every week and do like a, this is how you set up this, but done. And then, you know, the explanation videos that I've been giving. So if that's what you want to see, leave me a like or a comment or, or leave a comment. Cause you could like the video for other reasons. And I will not know. So leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, might start doing that just, you know, to make the videos a little bit shorter, a 20, 30 minute bit of video on BSD is difficult to watch. I understand that. Um, 
and maybe maybe I will be served doing things shorter. I'm still learning, still trying to get all this stuff to work out and trying to be the best experience for you who come in and watch me every week, every other week. So thank you for your time. If you like it, leave me a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Send it to your friends so they can subscribe. I love subscribers. Uh, every day I you know I get it I get at least maybe one subscriber a day and I'm like, awesome. That's great. So thank you very much and I'll see you in two weeks.